Hi everyone. Uh, inspired by my Tweed colleague Cheng Shao, um, I'm going to share with you a, a, a sneaky trick that that I've discovered in GHC uh, that allows us to access uh, the the full power sort of 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 the GHC type checker environment from within template Haskell. Um, so this is sort of a, a bit of a dark art here that we're going to to sort of break out of the template Haskell abstraction uh, today. So um, here we're going to start with our module we're going to call it check warnings we'll, we'll see why because we want to uh the, the the sort of high level idea is oh maybe i want to know what warnings are enabled uh in generating my template haskell code so that's going to be sort of our motivation here today um so uh oh that does not exist yes please create um this will all uh be be posted i'll, I'll send a link oh but um in the end i'm going to be hooking into ghc so here this loaded in ghc 8.8.1 i don't want to work against ghc 8.8.1 so let me set my local GHCI to be the right one in place bin GHC stage two interactive. Okay, um, and, and I'm purposefully sort of doing this live so you get to see a little bit of, of, of how my Emacs is set up um, uh, in case that's of interest. So, okay, so let's, oops, I have to quit that and then reload. Okay, so now we're in a nice fresh head. That's from just a few days ago. Um, so let's see here. Uh, what I want to do is I want to do something, you know, there's, there's easier ways to do this, but uh, I'm going to write a const function, and my const is going to be some, um, uh, some splice here, and here it's going to be a fairly simple one. Uh, I want to take a lambda, so let's see, or I want to return a lambda, so this is going to be return lam e. Um, oh, I can never remember all of this stuff. So let me import language dot haskell, whoops, haskell dot th dot syntax. And then what are our, all of our expressions? Here we go. Um, so lambda, here we go. So that's going to take a list of patterns. Uh, well, I want a variable pattern x and another variable pattern y. Whoops, does that work out? Yes, it does. And then in the content, so now I have to just have the expression. Oh, that's just going to be a variable expression. Like name x. OK, let's give that a try. We try to compile. Oh, I need template Haskell. Of course I do. So let's add template Haskell to the mix. Um, oh, oh, and then I've, I need to import things. Import language.haskell dot th dot syntax. By the way, I could just import dot th, but, but syntax gives me extra stuff, and I'll need that extra stuff later. Um, OK, so now now I, I load this, but what we see here is I get defined but not used y. And that's because I've bound y here, uh, but I haven't actually used it in the right-hand side. So this, this is accurate. Um, but you know maybe this splice is used in, in a module, and I don't know whether that warning is enabled or not. And maybe I want to adjust what I produce based on what warnings are enabled. Um, it's also, I think I'm going to turn this on ddump splices here. So this will, uh, if I turn that on now when I run this, I actually get to see the code that GHC sees. So this is the code that's being type checked that gives me the warning. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to say, well, you know, this is more informative. I, I like to use the name Y, but but I don't want to cause a warning. So I want to check, is the warning, uh, the appropriate warning enabled, this unused matches warning, whoops, this unused matches one. Is that enabled? If it is, then I'm going to use the wildcard pattern. Otherwise, I'll use this, this Y pattern. That's what I want to do. But if I look at the... Um, What's available in template Haskell, I don't, I don't have that. So a good way of seeing what's available in template Haskell is to look at the quasi class. So the quasi class is, um, this is defined in this, in this th.syntax module, and this defines sort of all of the hooks that we have into the environment. Uh, so if it's not here, we can't do it. Uh, there's wrappers around a bunch of these things, but these are the raw hooks that, that we have available. So for example, we can create fresh hygienic names, which is much better than using mcnamex, but mcnamex is very convenient. Um, we can reify. This is very powerful, right? If I know the name of a type, for example, I can get all kinds of information about that type. That's really useful. But that doesn't give us what we want here. If we look through this list of things in the quasi-monad, we're not going to find what we want. Uh, the closest is is that we can look at whether the extensions, uh, what extensions are enabled. So that gives us some information, but not exactly what we want. 
So what I really want is I want the information from the internal uh, type checker environment. And so to understand a little sort of the, the next step here, uh, we're going to have to look inside of GHC a little bit. Um, and so I happen to know where to look. So we're going to look at GHC TC um, Gen Splice. Um, so this is the module in GHC's type checker that uh, that does uh, that supports template Haskell. And so actually here, well, we see some quasi stuff. So let's just search here for quasi, run quasi. There's a bunch of qua ooh. This is what I'm looking for. So here, what we're saying is that the TCM monad, this is the main monad within uh, GHC's type checker. The TCM monad is, in fact, an instance of this quasi-class. And uh, though the, the, the exact root is longer than I want to get into in this video, um, this is sort of the key step that connects what we do um, at users compile time, right? Users can write template Haskell code, but we somehow need to connect this to GHC's internal state. And so we use this, this quasi-class. This is the fundamental link. So in fact, whenever I have a queue um, in template Haskell, what do I mean by a queue? So uh, let's comment that out. And instead, let's just do this. So if I do that, I see that... Um, that what I put inside my, my parentheses here uh, is actually an exp queue. Well, what on earth is an exp queue? Can I get more information about that? Oh, no, I can't because it's not in scope. Well, we can fix that easily. th.lib.internal, evidently. An exp queue is just a queue exp. And what is queue? Queue is. Uh, uh, a monad defined in, in th.syntax uh, with this definition. So we'll come back to that in a moment. But the idea here is that what we write in the parentheses is going to be uh, in the queue monad. So this is what allows us to query the type environment um, through this queue monad. Um, OK, so let's see. Where were we? Um, so we have this, we have this queue monad. Uh, but what I actually want is I want to run operations in the TCM monad. So now we look at, at the Q monad. So the Q monad is this funny kind of thing. Um, it works for any monad M that's a quasi, and it just sort of wraps around that. So we can really think of Q as an abbreviation for... For this, right? That's sort of what this new type says, but it's it's all it's wrapped up in a new type, so we get better type inference. Um, okay, so what this means is, um, is is what I'd like to do here is I'd like to run something in my in my TCM monad, um, but I only have the Q monad. But Q is an abbreviation for this. But I happen to know that the particular monad that my splice will be evaluated at is this TCM monad. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to end up writing run TCM, which takes a TCM expression and turns it into a Q expression. This is the, is the sort of the sneaky bit. Um, so run TCM here. Um, well, how is this going to work? Well, it's going to take some TCM action. And then I'm going to use the Q constructor. So if I'm using the Q constructor, now I need to provide something of this type. But actually, what, what happens here is um, these arguments will implicitly get passed in. So I sort of don't have to worry about them. So now I just have to provide something of type MA for some m, but I know what it's going to be. I know it's just going to be TCM. So now is the time we sneak. And I say unsafe coerce. Um, by doing this, what I'm doing is I'm taking, I know, I know by, by, by my knowledge of GHC that when my splices run, the particular queue that, that I'm working with is one that, that wraps up a TCM. 
Um, and so all I have to do is, is use unsafe coerce to sort of reveal the fact that it's a TCM. It's, it's hidden behind this abstract type variable M, but actually I can, I can get to it with unsafe coerce. So with that, I can now do fun things. So in particular, I want the, uh, to know all of the different warnings that are enabled. Um, and so I can do that by accessing the, um, the dime flags. So if I run D flags, run TCM, get dime flags. So what is get dime flags? Um, so I've just, I have a hotkey to search all of GHC. Um, oh, let's actually get dime flags. Let's look for a type signature for it so we can actually find its definition. So here it is. As long as a monad is a member of the has dime flags class, get dime flags will indeed return dime flags. And I happen to know TCM is a member of this has dime flags class. Um, so going back to my, my program here, if I get the dime flags, then um, I can also look at this session module here. So this is part of GHC. If I look at the session module, um, oh, I can look up stuff about warnings. Oh, there's this warning flag. Um, and let's see. Ah, this is what I want. I want to check, is this particular warning flag uh, in, in, in effect? So wapt, okay? Wapt, I can pass the warning flag and then the dime flags to get the bool. Okay, so now I can say if wapt um, and then something, d flags, then, whoops, fix formatting. So then if the warning is in action, then I don't want to do all of this. I instead want to use a wildcard pattern else I want to do this. Um, okay, so what do I put in the WAPT? Um, I have to look here in session, so let's find the definition for warning flag. Um, so here it is, and oh, something about matches. Oh, here, opt warn unused matches. So we're going to copy that. Whoops, not that file. I want this one. Um, and we're going to put that here, and there we go. Let's try to compile this, see what happens. Oh, um, GHC stage restriction. Oh, geez, we, will, we can't do that. But we can put it inside, can't we? Um, mm -hmm. Beware of white space sensitive languages. Um, OK, that should work. Uh, so the stage restriction means we, I can't have a variable outside of a splice because it might access things that depend on the splice itself. And that's very, very loopy. Uh, so here I do this. Oh, not in scope. Well, we can fix that. I happen to know where that is. That's ghc.tc.types. Uh, not that that other thing isn't in scope. Um, it comes from flags. Where is flags? Flags is ghc driver flags. Okay. Um, ghc driver flags. Oh, now wapt isn't in scope. ghc.driver.session. I happen to know. Uh, oh, unsafe coerce is not in scope. Well, that's easy to fix. Aha! And it works! So we've spliced this expression in, we checked the warnings, and because I happen to have unused matches enabled by default in my GHCI, indeed, we produced a, a lambda that does not bind Y. If I go ahead and change my warnings by saying options GHC, no unused matches. So we're going to disable the warning. Now I recompile and we see a different splice. So indeed, this is working. We're actually looking in, seeing what match, what, what, what warning flags are enabled, and then being able to make a decision uh, based on it. So with the key step being to use unsafe course, but this requires knowledge of a little bit of, of, of internals of GHC, not guaranteed to continue working, although this is probably would have continued working a decade in the past. I, my guess is it'll continue to work a decade in the future. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.